Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel where your likes, comments, and subs are always greatly appreciated. In front of me, I have the Zoom LiveTrack L6 Compact Mixer and this mixer also functions as a standalone multi-track recorder. You don't need a computer to record. It could record everything directly to the SD card that is loaded into the side of the unit. I've already made a video on some of the basics of the SD uh, card recording. I'll put a link in the description below for that particular video. For this video though, I wanted to cover three specific things. One, what happens when you hit any of the mute buttons while you're recording? Two, what happens if you hit either of these mono buttons for channels three or four while you're recording? And the last thing that I wanna cover are the file sizes that are generated whenever you hit the record button here. This way you can game plan for what size SD card you're gonna to need to buy based off of your own personal needs and applications. If you're playing anything through the L6 and you hit the record button, you will activate multi-track recording. It's going to record all six of these tracks or channels, and it's also going to record a stereo master mix. If you're recording and you hit any of the mute buttons, which are buttons located right above any of the encoders for those individual tracks or channels, when you hit the, uh, the mute button during a recording phase, what's going to happen is whatever signal you have sent from these individual tracks. So if I've got the mute button up here for um, channel number three, I turn that mute button on. Whatever signal is flowing from the inputs from channel three into track number three and going out to the master out or the monitor out, when you are recording, the mute will be in effect for the master track, that stereo master track. No sound from channel three will make it to the master out on the SD card. However, while you're recording, track, uh, track number three, that individual track, will still have whatever sound is there on the SD card. So you get that dry recording with no effects for these individual channels, and the mute button does not affect the individual tracks during SD card recording. That mute only shows up on the master out or the master wave file that's saved onto the SD card. This could be a good thing or a bad thing depending on your needs, but you've got the master track out, will not have that sound from, in this case, whatever I've got going through uh, channel number three, but it will still record that individual channel three track. So I could edit it in post, I could mute it in post if I want to, or I could still use whatever was playing in channel number, in channel number three during my final editing and mix if I'd like to use it. The other thing to consider while you're using the record feature on the L6 is that you have these mono buttons above channels three and four. What that does is it will split the left and right signals for the inputs for channels three and four into two separately recorded mono tracks. In this case though, I've already had the record button playing. If I hit the mono button after I hit the record button, button nothing happens. So what I really have to do is make sure I've armed the mono tracks, those mono buttons where it lights up green, I have to arm those before I hit the record button. So if I do that, and if I did that for channel three in this case, and I hit the record button, what I will get our uh, our individual tracks for tracks uh, one, two, four, five, and six, I'll get that master out. But number three will be split into track three left, or an L, track three right, or an R. So you'll get those two separate mono files that you can, again, if you need it, edit those in post differently, and it gives you a little bit more flexibility. You just have to arm the mono track before you record. You cannot activate it during a recording session. It will not split up those individual WAV files into L and R at that point in time. It'll just keep it as a stereo track for however long you leave that record button on. Now, whenever you hit the record button on the L6, it's going to record all six tracks, and it's also going to give you a master recording, a stereo master recording. It doesn't matter if you have anything plugged into the channels or not, you're always going to get these six individual tracks saved as six individual wave files, as well as that master stereo wave file. Tracks one and two are gonna be mono. If you don't activate those mono buttons for three and four, those are also gonna be stereo, and five and six are also gonna be stereo along with that master uh, stereo recording. Now, everything's recorded 32-bit, at a 48 kilohertz sample rate. What that means is if you record for 30 seconds, the mono tracks are going to result in a 5.67 megabyte size file for track one, same thing for track two. Any of the stereo wave files 
are going to be about 11.3 megabytes in size. Overall, when you hit that button for recording, you're going to get a folder. And in that folder are going to be all those WAV files. In a folder for a 30 second recording, that entire folder is going to be about 66.4 megabytes in size. Now I went through and I did some uh, recordings with a stopwatch for 30 seconds and a minute and two minutes. And I kind of graphed all of those out. And what you see is that when you graph them out, it is linear. So you don't really have any kind of extra metadata that's being stored in a way that wouldn't result in a kind of like a linear recording. That means that we can extrapolate from those data and kind of uh, guess how big the file sizes will be if you record for longer stretches of time. So for a three minute song, if you just record for a three minute song, what you're going to get is something that's just under 400 megabytes in that file. So that's one three minute recording about 400 megabytes or so. Uh, if you go up to like a 10 minute song, that's actually going to result in something that's about 1.3 gigabytes in size. And if you just want to record, a live session, whether that's a practice session or you are doing a two hour show and you just want to hit the record button, that's going to give you something that's closer to about 15.8 gigabytes in that file. Again, it doesn't matter if you only are using one uh, channel, one track, you're still going to get that same size because everything is always going to be recorded. There's no way to arm individual channels or tracks. So you have to kind of game plan how big of a micro SD card you're going to need based off of your applications. If you're just recording three minute songs here and there, you probably don't need that huge of a card. But if you're always recording two hour shows and you want to keep using the same card for that, you may want to get a bigger micro SD card. If you really want to figure out how big of a micro SD card you're going to need, just multiply 132 megabytes times however many minutes you think that you're going to need for recording time. That's going to be the conversion ratio that you're going to need to game plan out what size micro SD card you're going to want to buy. So overall, I think the Zoom LiveTrack L6 is a fantastic compact mixer, but it is first and foremost a mixer. The multi-track recording features that are available to you are a nice convenience, but you don't get to arm tracks. You do have some nuances over how you're using the mono buttons or the mute buttons for better or for worse. You are gonna get all those individual six tracks that you could use to mix down and further edit in post. You're also gonna get that master mix, which was whatever the sound was for maybe your live show or your practice session, which is a great reference point for you to kind of go back and see what everything was like when it was all mixed together and what that ultimate sound is. So with that, that's all I really wanted to cover for this particular video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again next time. All right, goodbye.